for all your support. Thanks for being awesome. Thanks for being a great audience. Thanks for hanging out with me every single day when I'm here on stream. Thanks for contributing. Um, I appreciate it, okay? Um, especially with the stuff coming up soon with the taxes and everything, you know, your support is very much appreciated. So thanks to everyone who contributes. Um, and if you're wondering, you know, gee, how can I keep Phil doing this? You know, I love Phil's daily live streams. I love all the free content he puts out on YouTube daily. Um, you know, how can I help out? Well, there's many ways. You can check out my Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil, where your monthly pledges earn you personal perks. This month, if you pledge five bucks or more, you'll be able to nominate your favorite moments for my 10 years as a content creator on the internet for the upcoming retrospective event in April. Um, or you can get your questions answered on my bi-monthly Q&A show, Ask the King, that's coming up next month. Or you can even get a private Q&A video made. All right, give it a look. <clears throat> Thanks to anyone who's an ongoing patron of mine. It's much appreciated. Um, you can buy something from my Teespring store, where I sell all kinds of fun stuff, like merchandise uh, such as T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, etc. Thanks to anyone who has bought anything. I personally can attest to the quality of the stuff. It's great because um, I own a bunch of it myself. Okay. Um, but if you're in particular, if you are here actually live on the stream and you want to get a shout out on today's stream, you can do so. If you either cheer, sub, or tip, I will give you a shout out during the stream. Okay. Um, so please... If you, you know, want to get some kind of fun interaction or if you want to get recognition, because the other thing is, as you guys can see, we have a stream stats leaderboard where I track things such as the top cheerer and top tipper of the day. And so I'll be tracking that and updating that periodically when we get a new top cheerer or top tipper. Um, it also tracks subs. And I should mention this thanks to anyone who subbed in the last couple of days. Subs are back up to over 500, which is great. Um, many benefits of being a subscriber, including 38 and counting emotes that you have access to we just added four new emotes the other day they're really great stuff people seem to really enjoy them and they're using them on a daily basis <clears throat> in addition when i take ad breaks you will not have to watch the advertisements and in addition to all of that um you know you get a cool chat crowd match to show how long you've been a supporter all right so many benefits to being a subscriber please consider subscribing if you have not it helps out the channel we already hit the sub goal for this month but next month, I will probably have a new one. I'm basically, what I'm thinking of this this coming month is a new uh, playthrough where the viewers will pick. But I don't think I want to do Patron's Choice this time. Because whenever I do Patron's Choice, people get angry that, oh man, I didn't get any input because I'm not a patron. So I'm debating how can I do it outside of Patron's Choice. And I am thinking it's just going to have to require forum uh, forum registration. Because what I think I'm going to do, here's my idea, all right? If we hit a sub goal in March, which I don't know what the sub goal will be yet, but if we hit a sub goal, then anyone will be able to come to my forums on thekingofhate.com and nominate games for a patron or, or a special viewer's choice playthrough. Once the nominations are in, then I will use those nominations to create uh, basically a list of games that, that everyone will be able to vote on. All right, what I'll you look for is the common games that are nominated and narrow it down to maybe 10. And then we'll have a public poll where people will be able to vote on which of the 10 games do you want to see as a playthrough, okay? So now, unlike when people say, oh, it's not fair when only the patrons do it because the patrons always nominate the same kind of games, it'll be open to the public. However, you will have to register for my forums. So I'll still have some kind of control over the event. It's not like, oh, I'll just put a poll out willy-nilly and who knows what's going to what's gonna happen. Instead, I'll be able to have nominations that are based on people who registered in my forums and then there'll be public voting on the ones that become the most nominated. Okay, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I don't know how that's going to work. Okay. Just being honest here, I don't know how it's going to work out. But what I may also do is give the patrons priority nomination, okay? So, like, for example, if a patron nominates a game, it'll automatically get into the running, while if if someone who's not a patron nominates a game, well, that's okay, but those are going to be narrowed down to, say, five or six selections that'll go into the final poll. I don't know. I, again, I'm still brainstorming. If this is a new thing. I've never done one like this before. It's always been patron's choice, and... After doing Patron's Choice for over three years, I think it's time to mix it up a little bit, you know? 
So I'll have more information about that soon. But anyway, I digress. Um, subscribing has many benefits, okay? Uh, so anyway, if you cheer sober tip during today's stream, I will give you guys a shout out. I appreciate any contributions you guys give. If you want to get recognition for being top cheerer or top tipper, you can get it. You'll be up there on the leaderboard until someone beats you. <clears throat> and today is the last opportunity for those who want to cheer and get up on the cheering leaderboard um, for this week because it, oh, it resets overnight. It resets uh, Sunday nights into Monday. So as of tomorrow, we'll be at zero again. So just saying, good opportunity for those who are interested to go ahead and... Um, you know, get in on the cheering leaderboard for the week, okay? Get your recognition. By the way, I forgot to mention this when I was talking about the schedule. My next day off will be next Monday. So tomorrow is my day off, and then my next day off is a week from then. So I will be here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, six straight days of double streams coming up. So 12 gameplay streams in the next week. Pretty cool, right? All right. So thanks to anyone who contributes. Much appreciated. Right now, and the final thing I'll say before I start doing shout-outs, any method of contribution helps tons and helps equally. There's no certain method of contribution that you can do that's better than others. Sometimes there is. Right now, anything. Cheering, subbing, tipping, Patreon, Teespring, everything's great. All right? So please go right ahead. If you wish to contribute any way you want to support, go ahead. Okay? All right. Okay, time for shout-outs. So first of all, um, let me refresh my Muxy because I didn't. I foolishly didn't, and it doesn't have all the information updated. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, oh, Wumi Bot did a 50-bit cheer overnight and said real squid hours. Because Wumi apparently is, uh, I believe, moving uh, to China or going back to China. And it's going to be on this this hours that basically don't coincide with my streaming schedule. Thank you, Wumi, for the cheer. I appreciate that. It was good to see you in the stream the other day, by the way. And I do hope that everything's going well with you, okay? Uh, Aussie Steve cheered overnight. He said, besides an untimely death, what kind of situation or event would make you consider never streaming again? Jeez. Um, psh, I mean, consider never streaming again. I guess... I mean, like, for example, I do my damnedest to abide by all the Twitch rules, you know? I actually go out of my way to make sure that the stream is in line with Twitch rules. And it's been now about a year since I had any issues with Twitch rules, which is great. Um, I love doing this for a living. You guys know that. This is the place to stream. Um, it has the most tools available uh, via mo chat moderation, via contribution methods. Like, there's just so much going for it, okay? Um... So I love being here. Um, if I ever were to be banned from Twitch, I would probably seek out another method to stream. What would it be? I have no idea. I don't know what another method would be the best method. Quite frankly, I don't know. Because um, I know Twitch is the best. So it would be very unfortunate if I were to have to leave Twitch. I would hope I never have to. Okay. Um, so, you know, that being said, only, the only uh, there's only a few things I can think of. That would make me want to never stream again. I guess the first would be if I were, like, blacklisted everywhere for some reason, right? Like, if it was so difficult to stream because everywhere I go, I constantly people are harassing me and I'm getting banned via the rules and everything, then what's the point, right? You know, I'm really in a fight for trying to stream when I just keep getting, like, banned everywhere. You know what I mean? The thing is, I don't do anything awful, to warrant that kind of punishment or behavior. It's not like I put out risque content and I'm constantly saying, you know, things that could be deemed as not uh, PC via the terms of service, right? I'm not out here saying racist stuff and we don't talk politics on the stream that could get you in trouble. You see what I mean? This is basically about gaming. My love of gaming and sharing that love of gaming with all of you. And because we stick to that, it really, you know, we never get in hot water for anything, which is good. You know, I don't want this to be a controversial topic stream. I want it to be a fun gaming stream where you could just relax and chill, right? Um, the only, honestly, this is the truth of the matter. The only thing that I could think of that would ever make me would not, never want to stream again would be if you guys just didn't care anymore. You know what I mean? Like, if I didn't have an audience, if no one wanted to watch me play games, 
and no one wanted to interact with me on a daily basis, if it just became no one likes Phil anymore, then I wouldn't want to do it anymore. The reason I love doing this is because on a daily basis, I have fun interactions with all of you. We have positive, great stuff on stream, fun gameplay. You know, we all have a bunch of laughs every day. We have a good time, right? If this wasn't a good time, who would want to be here, right? <clears throat> so if for some reason, there was such a, a, a flip against me that no one really cared about watching my stuff anymore and it was just a negative thing and why does he even do it? Then I would stop doing it. But the bottom line is it's not been that experience at all. It's been the complete polar opposite. That become, I become, that Since I've become a full-time streamer, I've been seeing more positivity than ever before, which is awesome. You know, there were years there when I was focusing on just being a full-time YouTuber where I pretty much only saw negativity. And it was very, very unfortunate because, you know, it made me feel shitty. It did. And then when I became a full-time streamer, it kind of completely did a 180. <clears throat> so, um, there you go, guys. And, you know, that would be it. Because I've, I've told you guys, even if I were, say, if I were to win the lottery, okay? If I were to win the lottery and overnight become a multimillionaire and I never had to work another day in my life, I would still stream. Would I stream as much as I do now? Hell no. You know, maybe I would stream a few times a week <clears throat> for a major game or something, a release or, you know, Apex Legend, you know, chill stuff, chill streaming. I would still do it because I love it. I love the interaction with you guys. It's fun as hell to do this. And I wouldn't want to give that up. I love it. I love having a platform where we can talk and have fun together. And, you know, it's it's great. Even if I was, you know, filthy freaking rich and never had to... to work again, I would still do this. Because that's how much I love it. I did this, remember, I did this gaming on the internet as a hobby for three years before I ever made any money doing it. I don't do it for the money. I do it because it's fun and because I like an audience, uh, you know, that, that, that cares about me and my feelings about games and the like. That's why. Okay? It's my actual love of gaming that keeps me going. Trust me, if I didn't love gaming and doing this, I wouldn't be doing it anymore because it's been a crazy roller coaster ride up and down over the years. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, so there you go. All right, let's continue on. So now we're going to talk about uh, contributions during today's stream. We actually started out with Likes of Her Soul tipping me $25, which is awesome. He said, saw your recent retrospective event on YouTube and loved it. Thank you, Likes of Her Soul. I loved it too. And the thing is, the retrospective event ended up being very different than what I thought it was going to be. Because I wanted to check out my vlogs, right? So I ended up watching a lot of the old school vlogs from the King of Hate HD channel. <clears throat> and I thought, man, you know, this is going to, we're going to go through all these in, a, in, a, in fast as hell. And, you know, it's going to be over. It's gonna, we're going to run out of content. My God, we didn't even scratch the surface. Like, we barely watched a third of the vlogs on the King of Hate HD channel. Um, and I didn't even watch any gameplay. I didn't even watch a single piece of gameplay during that, sh that event, because we were do so busy watching fun vlogs, so, <clears throat> yeah, pretty awesome, and I'm looking forward to the next one, the next one should be awesome too, in, uh, in March, so thank you, Lights for Soul, $25 tip, very generous, <clears throat> and much appreciated, thank you, thank you, all right, so Swaggins cheered, he says, I sold my Switch today, no good games coming out, and the indie style shit I played is on my PS4, Better to get some money back than have it collect dust. Fuck Nintendo. I won't go that far, but I will say 2019 may be the driest year ever so far for Nintendo. Like, what is coming out this year that's, that you must play on the Switch? Let's just think about this for a second. <clears throat> hmm. Well, apparently they're going to do a modern version of The Legend of Zelda um, Link's Awakening, which is was the one on Game Boy, which I never played. But they claiming it's coming out this year. I wouldn't put too much stock in that, but maybe it is. So you got that. Um, Super Mario Maker 2 is coming out later this year. Mario Maker 1 was one of the most popular games on the Wii U. That's not saying much because the Wii U was a flop. But still, it was a great game. I played it. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> so there you go. Um, and, uh, oh, there is one more. Marvel Ultimate Alliance, the new one. I don't know if it's 3 or they're naming it something else. And I actually really like the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. It's been a decade since the last one. 
Why, I have no idea, because it would have probably been a cash cow to make these, but they didn't. So there's a new one coming out on Switch this year. I am excited for that, and I I'm definitely want to do a co-op playthrough with other people who have Switches. So if you have a Switch, and you want to do some fun co-op with me later this year, that's the game to do it in. Alright, that should be pretty fun. But outside of that, so there's three games on the Switch this year with playing... Okay, Tetris 99 came out, right? That's a free-to-play game for, like, a week. People will be excited, and it won't matter anymore. So, you see what I mean? Like, what are you supposed to be playing on the Switch? And this is the problem with Nintendo. You know? They claim they have third-party support. In reality, what they have is shovelware. Because I know, because recently I've been looking on the Nintendo Store on the Switch, and it's all crap. It's like a bunch of indie games you don't really care about, or you could just play on another console anyway. Um, Free-to-play games that are crap. Microtransactions out the butt. Games that look like they should be on a phone. And then you've got your giant first-party Nintendo games, which, you know, there's like four a year. So, you know, I just... I just got to kind of shrug and be like, I don't know, man. I don't know what the what you're going to play on your Switch this year. So I agree with you, Swag Swaggins, you really aren't missing that much. I mean, yeah, Mario Maker 2, Zelda, and Marvel Ultimate Alliance are probably going to be good games, but you're right. If you need money now, <laughs> a couple hundred bucks versus the few games you'll be playing on the damn thing, right? So I understand. I totally do. <clears throat> okay, so I got... Someone impersonating Swag has tipped me a dollar and said something stupid, so I'm just going to ignore it, okay? Um, but we will update the total tips because it is up to 26 bucks. All right, Bagel Goose did 100-bit cheer and said best channel. Thank you, Bagel Goose, for the cheer. Let's get you up on the leaderboard here as the first 100-bit uh, cheerer for the day. Thank you very much, Bagel Goose. Um, Timbo Slice Cheer, he says, will you check... Up on your condo, are you worried? It's destroyed. No, dude. <laughs> My parents live in Connecticut. They check on it every once in a while. Don't worry, it's not destroyed. My parents actually told me just recently they went by there and checked it. and every, They said everything's fine. Just It's empty. There's nothing going on. It's fine. I don't know why people think it's destroyed. It's nuts. <laughs> it's, if, if it were destroyed, the cops would be called. they do an investigation and find out what the hell happened. And the eye of insurance on it that would cover it and would repair it. <laughs> people are crazy, like... Yeah, I'm, I think someone drove a bulldozer through Phil's condo in Connecticut. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> no, it's fine. Relax. <laughs> okay. Freddie Lamar Bosley did 100-bit cheer. He says, would you eventually have a biography or autobiography of your life? I would buy it. Um, I don't know. I don't think anyone would care. I'm just being very honest with you. If I were to do a biography of my life, I think maybe... A hundred people on this planet would care and would actually pay for it. I think a lot of people would pirate it and tear it apart and make fun of it. But probably a hundred people would actually pay for a copy of it, and that would be it. You know, I'm not stupid. I don't. I, I don't think that just because I made YouTube videos and I'm a streamer that I have some kind of mainstream worldwide appeal and I have to make a fucking book about it. It's hilarious because every da time I go to a bookstore. In the clearance section, I see 500, I'm not even kidding you, 500 books of every fucking dumbass YouTuber who thought just because they had a following on YouTube that people were going to buy their book. And every book is on clearance for like a dollar. No one wants that shit. They mass produce these books and they get an initial wave of sales from their fans. And then when the books go to bookstores and sit on the shelf and no one buys it because no one knows who the fuck these people are. No one cares. It's, it's so dumb. It's this over, over abundance of people who just because they made they made it big on the internet making videos, they think that they're some kind of hot shit and that people want to know their fucking crazy life story when in reality, the only reason they got any notoriety is luck and timing and not actual skill or anything else that people need to know. Um, I would, you know what I mean? Same for me. I don't need to write a book. You guys know my story. I've told you guys my story many times of the things that have happened, the ups and downs over the years, right? You don't need to hear my, my, the trials and tribulations of the nonsense. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I never would think in my head that I'm an important enough person to write a book about my freaking life. I'm just some dude who plays games on the internet, shares those with you, those daily, those experiences, and I'm just happy to be doing what I'm doing. Period. That's all I care about. I'm not some big-headed guy 
who thinks that I, I, anyone should ever want my autograph or want to read a book about me. Okay? <laughs> okay. So there you go. Big old goose did 100 bit cheers. As did you mention, you'll be going on a podcast sometime in the future. Um, I don't know if I'm going to or not. You know, I started talking about it publicly a few days ago, and people didn't seem too keen on the idea. They basically thought that the whole idea would basically be more negative than positive. So I'm still I'm still debating it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll let you guys know if I make a decision, okay? Timbo Slice Trudy said, age is not a reason. With that logic, we can see a 77-year-old DSP narking 50 years. Um, Dude, at least for now, we don't know what the hell is going to happen with laws and technology or whatever. You know, I see no reason to stop doing what I'm doing. I enjoy it. You know, I am. I enjoy doing what I do for a living and it's fun as hell and it, I'm my own boss and it's pretty neat. You know, it's unique. It's not like anything else out there. So as long as I can do it, I'd like to do it. Sleepy Reader uh, just subscribed to the channel for three months. He said, this might be my three month sub, but this is my first time that I use my own money to sub. Well, Sleepy Reader, welcome. Thank you very much for three months of support. Thank you for the subscription, and and uh, that's really cool. Thank you. <clears throat> Speculator has subscribed to the channel. Thank you for the sub. Speculator, appreciate that. Um, Kanji Monster cheered. Hold on a second, because my Muxy had an error, and I want to refresh it so I can actually read it. There we go. Kanji Monster cheered and said, Would you ever consider playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on the Switch? It's one of the best games on the Switch, to be honest. Um, I don't know. Like, I know it came out, what was it, last year? Or the year before? I don't even know when it came out. Um, I played Xenoblade. Uh, Xenoblade. I played the first one, didn't I? I don't even remember which one I played. But I just remember it being a long, le overblown, lengthy RPG, and I never even finished it. And this was back in the day. Uh, when I had more of a viewership on everything I did, and I didn't even finish it then, I, I don't think so, dude. I don't think I'm doing Xenoblade Chronicles. Just saying, I really have no interest in it. So, um, Baja Blast 72 did a 200 bit cheer and says, I love your streams. Well, I appreciate that you love my streams. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and get you up on the leaderboard. You're the top cheerer, Baja Blast. Two hundred bits. Thank you very much. Top cheer of the day. So I can shoot again, and he said, "You know, it really is such a shame with Nintendo. I love Mario Odyssey so much. Even Zelda was great, but having games uh, I like be few and far between. It wasn't worth it for me. Um, when I want to chill, my first thought is to boot up my PS4, not the Switch. You know, I hear you. I hear you. Some people, you know, it's there's still this mentality." There's still this mentality for some people. Um, who are just so in their heads about Nintendo. That Nintendo still to this day, with all the stuff that they've done, they had an entire console that flopped. But in people's heads, Nintendo could still do no wrong. They still can make no bad decisions. They're above criticism. That's just nuts to me. To say that a company, a game company, is above criticism. Like... What the hell? The reason that game companies improve over time is because of criticism. Without criticism, you'll have no opportunity for improvement because you don't know where you can actually improve, right? Criticism is a great thing. And whenever people write off criticism immediately just because, oh, it's Nintendo, yeah. It's stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know? It, it, the Switch is a good console. It's definitely better than the Wii U. At the same time, the Switch still suffers from exactly the same problems as every Nintendo console in the past 15 years. They don't have enough third-party support. The console's not strong enough to run third-party games at a, at a very at a good frame rate. You know, Dark Souls Remaster coming out for the Switch. Yeah, and it runs at sub 30 frames per second. And you know, what the fuck was the point? You see what you see what I'm saying? Nintendo still hasn't gotten it. They still don't get it. They just keep making the same mistakes over and over and over. But somehow they have a fan base that still supports them and, and buys their crap uh, regardless. You know? So, for me, it's a mixed bag. When a great first-party game comes out for a Nintendo console, I love it. And then the console sits around collecting dust for ages. 
you know, tonight's a reoccurrence. We'll actually be playing Tetris 99, and we'll see if it's any good. So I'll actually get some use out of my Switch, and then I can't even tell you the next time I'll play it again, you know. Um, I just don't know what to say, you know. I've talked about Nintendo over the years till I was blue in the face. They just do what they want, and they have a crazy, rabid fan base who just buy up their shit no matter what. Keep in mind, Nintendo might have gone out of business if they didn't sell Amiibos. <laughs> That's how bad it was. They weren't selling any consoles or games. They had to sell little figurines for about two and a half years to stay afloat. Because if it weren't for Amiibos catching on as a hot collectible, uh, they would have had like no profit. So I just want you guys to think about that for a while, okay? <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, Swang shoot again. It's funny because I was so hyped for Metro. Then I started playing it. I was just not in the mood to play it for some odd reason. I barely started to really get into it yesterday for a couple of hours. Now I'm in the mood for it. I love the Metro games. Do you ever get that feeling? A new game comes out that you're anticipating. When it comes out, you're just not in the mood to play it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Um, It happens. You get super hyped for something, then it comes out, and maybe you're just not digging it right away. It was weird because I like Metro had a lot of hype behind it, and then all of a sudden, the whole controversy happened with the Epic Game Store on PC. And it's like, it killed all hype for the game. I started playing it, and I was enjoying it, and people were just shitting on it. And I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? You know, just because there was some dumbass controversy that only affects PC gamers, I don't understand how this makes the game worse. You know what I mean? It doesn't. It's just stupidity that people get caught up in that stupid shit, and they let it, like, overcome them. They let themselves be overwhelmed and overcome with the drama on the internet instead of focusing on what the game actually is. And in my opinion, Metro Exodus is the best of all three Metro games. I really feel that. I think it's the best one uh, overall. They did a great job with the graphics, the story, the, the variety of locations, and the gameplay. Everything's good. So, you know, how you would shit on a game like that at launch just because of controversy outside of it, I don't know. But but I hear you. Sometimes you get excited for something, then it comes out and you just don't feel like it. You know, that's happened to me. Um, but, ultimately, if the game's good, you're going to get to it eventually. You know what I mean? So that's, you know, I definitely recommend you play Metro. I do. Um, you know, yeah, Metro's a great game. Metro Exodus is my favorite in the series. So, Silent General has subscribed. 25 months of support. That's pretty awesome. Thank you, Silent General. And, uh... What I'd like to do here... I want to do two things before we get started. I want to check sub count, and I want to give shout-outs to those who cheered this week, because this is my last opportunity before it resets overnight, okay? So, yeah, we're up to 514 subs. Thanks, all of you, for the support. And let's give a shout-out to the top cheers of the week, shall we? Okay. So thank you to the following people who were very supportive this week. In 10th place, we had BWT56. In 9th place, Timbo Slice. In 8th place, IRS on your mind. Which is funny because he only did the one cheer. Freddie Lamar Bosley in 7th place. Baja Blast in 6th. Bagel Goose in 5th. Van Clays in 4th place. Milkshake and Fries in 3rd. Jonathan Rojas in 2nd place. And... Infinite 55 with the top spot this week. Thank you, Infinite. Very nice. Thank all of you. Thank you all. Stillstream42. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you, Stillstream, for the sub. Appreciate that. And Speculator cheered and said, trying, uh, here, trying cheering for the first time. Decided to support you with a sub. Hope it helped. It absolutely does. Thank you very much, Speculator, for the cheer and the sub today. Very awesome. Thank you, thank you. 